But in 2007, my husband lost his job. Mm -hmm. And in two, by 2008, with the recession and the housing crisis, mm -hmm. we had had our fifth son. Mm. We lost our home to bankruptcy, ended up losing everything we owned except what fit into two little storage units. Sometimes what seems like the end is really the beginning. I'm gonna take you behind the curtain of my life and my friends are gonna tell their stories too. We're going from the pain to the promise in a real, raw, and organic way. Are you ready? Let's go. Riddle me this. What is the one thing outside of Jesus that if you found it, it could profoundly change your life? While you're thinking about that, let me tell you about a phrase I just recently heard and it kind of made me giggle. It said that nothing is truly lost since we're talking about finding things, unless mom can't find it. Y'all, Ashton freaked me out the other day because she was looking for something and she's like, I can't find it, I can't find it. Wait, mom, I found it. I'm like, uh, oh, it's true. She turned 20. She's out of her teenage years because if it had been two weeks earlier and she was still a teenager, I would have told her, girl, if that was a snake, it would have bit you. It is right here. Because moms, we seem to have this magical power of finding stuff. But if there's one thing that seems to get lost and even moms have a hard time finding it, and it's the answer to the riddle, it's confidence. And where could that confidence be? Is it in the laundry room when we couldn't get that stain out? Is it in between the couch cushions where we had that fight and it didn't go the way we thought? Is it under the car seat when we got caught going just a little bit too fast or driving just so good? I don't know, we can't seem to find it. Where is our confidence? I mean, isn't it the same for everybody though? Maybe we lost our confidence because of something we did. We quit a job and realized, mm, maybe we should have done that. We lost our cool and yelled at our kids and we felt so validated in the moment until we thought about it later and realized, I could have done that better. We didn't treat our spouse right. Oh, I hate when I do that. Or maybe we failed at something we tried. I mean, there's literally a million ways to lose your confidence. And I mean, listen, I get it. I have been foreclosed on, bankrupt, and gotten divorced. And all of that happened to me in the span of about 12 months. I mean, I totally know what it feels like to be like, how can I succeed in this life? I have totally blown it. But I want you to write this one statement down. There is no success without risk. I get it. Your whole life crumbled. You fell down. It was public. They posted it on social media. They have pictures. But if you don't ever try, and get back up. You know, there's only one way to fail, and that's to stay down. Otherwise, it was just a learning experience. At some point, you gotta get up again. You gotta get on your knees, and then start to crawl. Stand up, see if you can walk. It's probably gonna hurt a little. It's probably gonna be uphill, but that's okay. Here's your scripture for this. But I will remain confident in this, not us, not in our perfection or how good we got or how many times we've tried it. I'll remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. God's grace, His unmerited favor. We don't deserve it even on our best day. And He dishes it out in spades even on our worst day. God's compassion, His ideas, God is aching to flow through you. But to flow through you, you gotta be willing to step out. And I believe that God wants to do something in you today, and that is why you're watching. So I invited my friend, Allie Worthington. You might've just saw her on Good Morning America a few days ago. She's with me today, and we are going to share with you how to get your confidence back. How to keep your confidence when things don't go as planned. Y'all, that's every TV show for me. Allie, she knows a thing or two about confidence. She is an author, a business coach to some very high profile people. And I tell you what, she was on Good Morning America because she wrote such an amazing book. She started from scratch. She started from nothing. She built her confidence and so can you. Are you ready? Confidence nap. Let's go find your confidence. Rapid fire questions. 
with Ali Worthington. Three words to describe yourself. I am bold, I'm playful, and a little silly. Pizza toppings. I believe that broccoli should not be on pizza. I believe that pineapple should not be on pizza. Pineapple on pizza is an abomination. We're gonna get answers about why it exists when we get to heaven. But mm. I like good old fashioned pepperoni and extra cheese. Hobbies. I love to go to amusement parks. I love roller coasters. In my 40s, I decided to prioritize fun. So my hobby is riding roller coasters and going to amusement parks as often as possible. I may be the oldest grandma on a roller coaster one day, but as long as someone can wheel me to it, I will ride it. Rapid fire questions complete. My friend Allie Worthington is here. <laughs> Today we are going to work on increasing people's confidence. Hi. Hi. It's great to be here. <laughs> One thing I know about motherhood after, you know, being a mom for two or three years is um, most moms don't feel like we're good at this game. No, myself included. I have five sons. The youngest oh. is 15. The oldest is 24. So I can speak to this with a little bit of distance of where I was almost feeling like I was barely keeping my head above water when they were all little. And you have a really big grocery bill. <laughs> so huge, especially <laughs> lately. <laughs> you know, when, when we're kids, we think we can do anything. What do yeah. you want to be when you grow up? President, Superman, you know, any job in the world. And then as we get older, it starts scaling back. Mm -hmm. People start telling us what we can't do. We start believing that what other people say, whether it's true, whether it's valid, whether it isn't. Instead of using that to propel us, we allow that to hold us back. We get limiting beliefs instilled in our hearts yeah. and somehow we lose our confidence. How does a lack of confidence affect our lives, our, our livelihood and our futures? Well, I think a lack of confidence will make us hold ourselves back. Mm -hmm. um, what, when God puts a dream or a vision in our hearts, we go, oh, that's not for me. This is difficult. And we tell ourselves, I think one of three things, when, when God's given us a vision, mm -hmm. when things get hard, we say, maybe that wasn't from Him. Or we say, maybe I was just telling myself that, or I don't have peace about this, so mm -hmm. I'm not gonna do it. Mm -hmm. When sometimes I don't have peace about this just means it's a little bit harder than we want it to be. Well, and doesn't real faith mean stepping out on something that we can't do by ourselves? Mm -hmm. So how do you get confident enough to step out into something that you can't see, like in a space that you can fail? Yeah, I think the issue is we think confidence is something that we're born with or we're not born with it. Like our height or our hair color. Of course, you can change your hair color. <laughs> um, but we think confidence is something that doesn't change. Like, oh, she's confident or she's confident, but I'm not confident. Mm -hmm. When confidence is only built through taking action. Mm. It's like when we're younger and if someone asked you when you were three, are you a bike rider? You would have said, no, I'm not a bike rider. Mm. But you probably had a cute little bike with the tassels on it and you wrecked that bike a lot. And then one day you were riding that bike without training wheels and you could look around and go, what do you know? I'm a bike rider. And you were confident about it. But if you had been asked before you learned, mm -hmm. before you practiced, before you took action, you would have gone, no, I'm not a bike rider. I can never do that. Life is like that. Mm -hmm. Whatever God's calling us to do, we have to be okay with being bad for a little while and feeling like we don't know what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And also having the enemy attack because the enemy will say, you came up with this idea yourself. You're not supposed to do this. Yeah. If you were really supposed to do this, it would be easier. That's what the enemy wants to do. But if we just take step by step by step, one day we'll look around and go, what do you know? I'm the kind of woman that does this now. So I was trying to come up with my own definition of, of confidence. And I think true confidence is being very comfortable in failure. Mm -hmm. Which, I mean, I guess that makes me a confident mom. <laughs> <laughs> um, how, how do you balance confidence in failure or confidence in success? Well, I look at failure as a test. Mm -hmm. Anything we want to do, we're going to fail a lot. When you were learning to ride your bike, how many times did you wreck? Right? Oh, all the time. You want to see my knees? Right? <laughs> all those little failures. So we have to go, I am going to mess up. I'm going to fail at a bunch of little things before I'm successful. It's just the way it works. We mm. can't 
think that it just because God's called us to something, just because we have an idea for something, mm -hmm. that it'll be smooth. I, I talked about your success. So mm -hmm. let's talk about your start. You started your business out of necessity. Yeah, Tell awesome. us that story. So I was a stay-at-home mom to so all the boys and loved it. I, when I grew up, I knew that I wanted to be an attorney or a dolphin trainer, like many <laughs> girls, right? <laughs> and um, I decided once I started having kids that I just wanted to have kids and raise them. And I was living my best life. But in 2007, my husband lost his job. Mm -hmm. And in two, by 2008, with the recession and the housing crisis, mm -hmm. we had had our fifth son. Mm -hmm. We lost our home to bankruptcy, ended up losing everything we owned except what fit into two little storage units. Mm -hmm. So with uh, four kids and an almost five week old, we moved in with my grandfather for the summer. Uh, we would go to a McDonald's Playland every day. My husband, we'd use the free Wi-Fi. the kids would play. My husband would apply for new jobs and I would Google, how do you build a company on the internet? Because I knew <laughs> that God was moving me into a season where it was time for me to build. I wasn't quite sure what I was gonna build yet. Um, mm -hmm. I had already been playing around on the internet. I had blogs, I, I was doing some things like that. And so that fall when my husband got a new job, we settled in in Nashville and I became really serious on building my company. Mm -hmm. Started a magazine and then a conference and then consulting. And for the past 15 years, I've just been dedicated to helping other women thrive because I realized in 2008, because of the internet, mm -hmm. women had freedom to learn anything we wanted to learn. We didn't have to get anyone's permission to learn mm -hmm. that God could use this crazy thing called the internet to reach everyone. Mm -hmm. And we could build, we could try, we could do anything that God called us to do. For me, for the comfort of my own home with, uh, uh, you know, five crazy boys around me all the time. I've had so many wild and crazy things happen in my life. And I really should have run to God with it, but I either felt bad about it, I was confused about it, I was ashamed. I, I, I guess I didn't know how to be vulnerable with God. And so I had all these things I needed to say to God, all these things I needed His help on, and yet I, I couldn't come to Him. And I hated that. Well, it took me time, but I finally got through it. And what I started doing is I started writing down when I was mad, when I was embarrassed, when I was ashamed, when I felt unloved, when I felt overlooked. And I wrote down these prayers that I prayed when I told God, hey God, it's me again. I don't know what to do right now, but I know that I can trust you. And if you've ever been in a place where you wanted to talk to God, but you didn't know how to talk to him about your kids, about being lonely, about your finances, this book is for you. I want you to have a breakthrough in your prayer life. Hi, God, one more thing. If you guys haven't bought it yet, check it out. It is a must read, it's a must buy, and it's my favorite book. Please check it out. For just $1, you can download Hi, God, One More Thing. <laughs> or you can say, Hi, God, it's me again. I need to talk to you about these things. I started out in the pain, but I take you to the promise in just 90 seconds. I give you scriptures, you can research, and you can get a breakthrough. I don't want you to miss this opportunity to talk to God on a level that's gonna bring breakthrough in your life. Go get this book today. What is confidence? Confidence is knowing the answer, but asking questions so that somebody else can say it. Confidence is being right. I am right. You know I'm right but not having to say stuff. Confidence is not having to be the star, but shining anyway. Confidence is trusting God to be everything you're not. And when you're truly confident, I'm here to tell you doors will open for you that should not open for you. It says in Revelation, I will open a door that no man can shut. I remember it was 2009. I brought a picture to prove it because the clothes, the hair, feel free to poke fun. We met Joe Osteen in 2009. My hair was parted on the side. I had bangs, y'all. Why did I have bangs? I had bangs for the same reason, same reason my husband had that facial hair. It was 2009. Big, chunky, blonde streaks, all those necklaces and the flared pants on the bottom. Somebody should have stopped me. I thought I was cute. 
And so this was the first event that we had done with Joel and Victoria. And when we did the event, uh, we were down on the field for the event and it was wonderful and it was over. And I was talking to all these pastors on the field and Joel and Victoria Osteen, they leave and everybody leaves, but they're some of the last off the field. And I look up and around and I realize I have no idea how to get out of here. Joel and Victoria went that way. So I've got heels on, trying to be cute, right? These little heeled boots, right? So I'm running and I'm trying to catch up and they go through this little opening and there's a guy with a little blah, 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 blah thing. And um, I'm just running and I'm like, hey. And I just run past little Mr. blah, blah, blah. And he's like, hey. And so as I get in the building, there's a long hallway and they start going up some steps. So I run down the hallway and at the bottom of the steps is another guy with his little earpiece and his thing. And I'm like, excuse me, sir, I gotta go. He's like, oh, have a nice day. I'm like, thank you. I'm running up the steps, I'm getting out of breath. Get around the steps and they're going in this doorway. And I'm like, that must be the way out. Well, in front of the doorway is a guy and he's kind of standing in front of the door. And honestly, I don't have time for this nonsense. Because if I lose sight of them, I am lost in this huge building. So he's in front of the doorway. I walk up and I might have kind of been like, excuse me, sir. So I was like, hi, excuse me. I kind of just reached past him for the doorknob and he's like, um, okay. And I fling the door open thinking I'm walking out to where the whole group is. And instead I'm walking into Joel and Victoria Osteen's private dressing room. <laughs> Luckily everybody was clothed because they don't want to know me that good. They were so gracious as I'm like, oh my gosh, so sorry, wrong place. Y'all really don't know me, not a stalker, pinky promise. <laughs> Close the door behind me. Those three guys weren't supposed to let me through there. But I had so much legitimate confidence that I was supposed to be there in that moment. They just opened the door for me. And people are gonna open doors for you. Businesses are gonna open doors for you. Hearts are gonna open doors for you. Banks are gonna open doors for you. Positions are gonna have open doors for you. But I want you to hear me in this. The open doors are not just for you. The reason you have to step out is for the people that surround you. It's been said that with confidence that you have won even before you start. So Ali and I wanna help you win in life. Ali, we've established what confidence is. We talked about why we need confidence. Now let's talk about how do we improve our confidence level? So when you help people, when you coach people, how do you evaluate where their confidence level is and how do you start speaking life and confidence into them? Well, when someone is new, when someone decides I wanna build this or I wanna write a book, mm -hmm. sometimes there's not a lot of history in terms of the business or mm -hmm. writing a book to look mm -hmm. back on. So one of the first things women can do is they can go to their good friends not their pretend friends, not their frenemies, their mm. good friends, and say, what are my strengths? What are three things about me where you really see me excel? Mm -hmm. Where, when you need a friend to talk to about this thing, or when you need a friend to do this, what are those things? And just hearing that from family and friends, that can build a lot of confidence. And then for those of us who maybe are already in business or already have a bit of a track record, what are all of the things in the past five years or past mm -hmm. 10 years that you can actually write down and go, these are the things I did great. These are the experiences I have. Mm -hmm. Look back on those, those matter because those will give you a little bit of a hint of the future. Rehearsing and celebrating our wins. Yes. One of the things I have my clients do before we start every call, their homework is to write down three things that they did really well. Mm -hmm. And most women can give me three things that are a challenge, three things mm -hmm. that are a problem, but forcing women to sit down and go, oh, what have I done well this week? Mm -hmm. It feels uncomfortable. And I think there is that fear. If I celebrate my wins, mm -hmm. what if all of a sudden I become very prideful and full of myself, which yes. again, you don't change an apple into an orange overnight. Celebrating your wins and how you're partnering with God mm -hmm. and how he's getting you through, it's not gonna change your personality. And getting with authentic people. Because if we won't be confident in ourselves, we get a little bit jealous or we get comparison syndrome with other people. And so it makes us more hesitant to celebrate them. And then we can't even show up for the people that we love in the way that we need to if we have this little secret jealousy, compare, uh, comparative or competitive side, 
How do we build our confidence so we can show up good for the people that we love? Well, I think what you're talking about with friendship is really important because we want to think about friendship as having concentric circles. We may have 20 friends mm -hmm. or 10 friends, but maybe only one or two or three of them are those kind of friends that are confident in themselves so they can celebrate with us when mm. we have a win. Mm. But it doesn't mean that all the other friends who can't celebrate aren't truly our friends. It yeah. just means we know who the friends are that we can go to who will celebrate with us. Mm -hmm. That's really, really important. Once we start filling up our confidence tank and we're like, you know what? I'm feeling pretty good. Like, I might not be the world's best mom, but I'm not the world's worst. Or <laughs> I might not be the world's most awesome wife, but you know, I, I, my husband loves me and I love him. Once we fill up the confidence tank or, or get it higher, does it just stay at that level or do we have to keep pouring in? Oh, we have to keep pouring in because it, because sometimes our confidence will go up and down with our moods. Mm -hmm. I may be more confident than other times uh, of the month, depending on my moods, yeah. if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I may be grumpy for a week. I may feel like I'm terrible at everything, but we have to think about pouring into ourselves mm -hmm. where we go to the Lord in prayer yes. and go, show me about myself. Show yes. me what you want me to do. We can't live a life where it's, it's based on our emotion mm -hmm. or based on our hormones or based on how mm -hmm. we feel because we had an argument with our husband that day. Mm -hmm. We have to go back and look at our history with God, mm -hmm. knowing that God will show up for us with whatever he has called us to do. He's always going to be there. But we have to look at our own history mm -hmm. and go, I may feel bad today. I may feel a comparison about someone else, but I can look at my history mm -hmm. and know that I'm the woman for the job. If you could give somebody one piece of advice, if you were on a coaching call with somebody right now and they said, Allie, it's been a hard day. I blew it. I don't know if I can do this. What would you tell them? I would tell her to remember the call, remember the idea. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we kind of confuse uh, the call and the nudge that God gives us. And we go, well, what if it wasn't the Lord? What if it was just me? And if you feel a calling to build something, to do something new, and in any way it benefits people, it's probably of the Lord. If you have a calling and you go, this is the nudge I'm hearing from the Lord, I think I'm supposed to be an assassin. Mm -hmm. I would go, I don't, I think we should pray into that. I think it may not be from the Lord. But I think sometimes we overthink it and, yeah. we, and we overcomplicate it. We go, I don't know if it's me, I don't know if it's the Lord, but if it's something that is gonna expand the kingdom, if it's mm -hmm. something that's gonna benefit other people, mm -hmm. take a chance on it yeah. and assume it's from the Lord. Mm -hmm. I, th I think that's the best, the best encouragement there is. In just a minute, I'm gonna have Ali pray for you. What's your dream? Does it seem impossible? What if I told you I have a simple five-step plan that will help you make that dream a reality? Come on, I've spent far too many years of my life feeling stuck, stuck in my circumstances, being frustrated by another failed attempt to reach a goal. But when I researched and developed this elementary five-step process, it changed my life. Now I'm literally living my dreams. I wrote the book Goal Getters because I wanna help you live your dreams too. How? By reaching your goals. You can start achieving your goals today by visiting nicolecrank.com forward slash goals and you can get my Goal Getters book. I've heard it said that a dream is a goal that never gets written down. But if you write down your dream, it becomes a goal. I wanna show you how to write your goals in a way that's scientifically, psychologically, and biblically proven to help you achieve them. Together, we'll develop a vision plan, action steps, and goals that you can actually measure and assess. By following the steps in the book, I'll help you make a plan that will allow you to commit to accomplishing your goals. No more New Year's resolutions, no more failed plans, just attainable goals. So are you ready to change your life and become a goal getter? Go to NicoleCrank.com forward slash goals today and get your copy of Goal Getters. Your dreams are calling. Ali's gonna pray for you in just a minute, but I wanna remind you of this first. Here's one of the unique, amazing, redeeming, ah, uh, People aren't like this, but God is kind of qualities. God never, ever kicks us when we're down. In fact, he's right there going, come on, you can get up. I know you can do it. I know what you're made of. I made you of that. And he will convict you to get back up. Come on, you can't stay down. You can't stay here. But he'll never condemn you when you're down. 
Like, you deserve it. You did that. Mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just not his nature. The Bible says about God, it says, He who began a good work in you. Yeah, you. He who began a good work in you, it says he will complete it. He's not finished with you yet. He's in your corner. I don't know if you remember the movie Rocky. I don't really remember the movie, but I've seen clips and there's this guy in his corner going, you can do it, Rocky, come on. God is like that guy in the corner. He is your true source of confidence and God can't be shaken. So if our confidence is in God, our confidence can't be shaken. So I wanna encourage you today, don't hesitate to get in a prayer space and get with God and get refueled and get refreshed and get your boldness back. Come on, Stella, get your groove back. Your groove isn't in you, your groove is in God. Your confidence is not in you, your confidence is in God. So get in that prayer space, get your confidence back. Don't wait, that's why you're here. I mean, here's me, I'm the coach, I'm like, get off the bench, let's go. Don't wait, don't listen to the enemy's lies of shame and guilt and condemnation, trying to keep you anchored here. No, the enemy wants you down for the count and God wants you back in the game. He loves you like with an unconditional, irrevocable, no matter what you did kind of love. He never failed, we do. He never will, we will, but that's okay. Place your confidence in that fact that God's never gonna fail you. Ellie's about to pray, but I wanna invite you before she does to be a part of my circle of friends. That's what I do is I get in the corner and I coach you, I encourage you, I challenge you. I challenge you because I want you to be strong. I wanna be a resource to you. I wanna help you stay strong in confidence. I want you to run your particular race that you were created for, that you were graced for, that's gonna be a challenge to do. It's gonna take faith, but if you don't take your place, it's gonna be empty. We need you to step up. We need you to be all that God has called you to be, and I wanna help you do that. I mean, God's plan for our life, it can look big and daunting, but when you have friends cheering you on, when you have someone mentoring you along the way, it is so much easier to step out in faith. So go to NicoleCrank.com forward slash circle and join my circle today. Now, let's pray. Lord, I pray for the woman watching right now, the woman listening right now, the woman who feels like she's at her wit's end. Yeah. She's exhausted. Yeah. The kids have driven her crazy. Mm. I pray for peace. I pray for the woman who you have mm. put an idea and a dream and a vision in her heart to build something, to step out in a new way, whether it's a book or a business or a Bible study. I pray for confidence. I pray that she will know every step of the way that you're with her. Lord, for the woman who has been told all her life mm. that she wasn't the right woman for the job, mm. that she was maybe not the first choice, mm. that maybe words were spoken over her when she was a girl that she still hears in her head 20 years later, 40 years later, 60 years later. Lord, do a work in her that she knows yeah. that those words are not true, that that is not her identity. Yes. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And Ali, you are really good at this. Hold on a second. You got a hair. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>